Covering the High Plains with news, weather, and information. From TV23 Studios in Sublette, this is High Plains Today. Hi, everybody. Welcome to this special edition of High Plains Today. Joining me today, State Senator Garrett Love from the 38th District. We're going to talk about stuff that's going on in Topeka and pretty much everywhere else, too. Senator, good to see you today. Yeah, thanks for having me on the show, Chris. Yeah, it's good to see you. I get to see you every now and again, so you do. that's always good. You do. All right, so lots of stuff happening in Topeka. You got lots of stuff still coming up. You go back, what, that's next right. week? Yeah, we've, it's been a good break being out of Topeka. I, I've liked that. We've had the, the end of our regular session was towards the end of March, and a veto session, or really it's kind of more of a wrap-up session, starts up next week, next Wednesday, so we'll be... Packing up, heading back to Topeka. How many changes of clothes you're going to take with you? Uh, <laughs> That's well, the important. You part. know, last year I'd hoped it was going to be, you know, like five or six, and it ended up being like forty. <laughs> I think I, it was, last year was a record for numbers of days in a veto session, and we don't want to do that again. That was uh, that was not good. But uh, so I'll try to be prepared. So that was one of those deals where you had to do a lot of laundry last year. You're hoping yeah, you don't this year. A lot year. of laundry. Hoping maybe, yeah, hoping not this year. So the goal is a short veto session, a short wrap-up session. Sometimes when people get too much time on their hands, you know, towards the end as you're working out uh, compromises and, and budgets, they start coming up with other ideas that... They've all had too much time to sit around time. during the break yeah, thinking. Too much time to sit around. Okay. Yeah. All right. So the big things that you're going to have to concentrate on when you get back there next week? I mean, you don't have to worry so much about the budget yet, right? Well, the budget uh, is probably going to be one of the, the bigger items because the consensus revenue estimates, which is where you have a group of uh, a budget directors, economists from the universities, um, revenue specialists, get together a couple times a year and kind of give us the estimates which we work off of, um, which the last two years uh, have been substantially off in terms of their estimates. So um, they're going to come back in and give us an estimate, and we'll be able to then kind of see if, if we need to make adjustments to our budget uh, based on what their estimates are. So how do you think that's going to go? Because I know this last week, you know, uh, Speaker of the House Merrick said he's a little frustrated on how these budget estimates and revenue estimates are, how they come up with those. Yeah, it's, it's very frustrating, uh, and, and I've felt that way for a year. Like we had, and there were some issues, I think about a year and a half ago where we had the fiscal cliff, or maybe it was two years ago, and you had some things that were unforeseen. Um, in that case, it was people thought a capital gains rate was going to go to 35%, so everyone sold their um, different uh, uh, assets or stocks at the end of one fiscal year, so you had a big surge, and then it dropped down, little things like that, but... Uh, We've been looking at that for two years where as the estimates have been uh, substantially off, which then that's what we go off of as legislators. Some say, you know, it's, they've been estimating on a certain amount of growth and maybe, you know, you, you kind of like that more as you're budgeting because it gives you kind of more padding, but that, that's maybe not a good thing because then you're, you're budgeting too much uh, compared to the amount of money you actually have. And that's been hard. I mean, we've had um, a lot of... Uh, I think in the last two years, a lot of months of not being on what estimates are. And, and oh, yeah, I think they've, they've hit it, what, twice out of the last 14 or 16 or about something that, like that? It, about that. Yeah. It's, been, it's, been a tough, it's been tough, and, and uh, that's difficult. But we have other issues and circumstances that we know very well out in western Kansas right now. And when you're looking at uh, how important commodity prices are to us, and we've had uh, all... Of agriculture has been hard, hit hard by these low prices, oil and gas. So I have counties in my district where uh, oil and gas revenues is 40% of their county budget. And when oil and gas prices drop down to around $20 a barrel, uh, that's a hard hit. To our state budget, we're looking at hundreds of millions of dollars. And that's more just in severance taxes. But if you go beyond that to the income taxes these individuals pay, uh, sales taxes on what they're spending money on, both people in the field and also the white collar jobs, oil and gas companies. And then, and then beyond that, when they're unemployed, we start paying out money instead where we're paying out money to people who don't have jobs. So, you know, you have a big flip there that's cost a, a lot of money. And that's uh, one of those things you like paying less at the pump. But for Kansas and about five other states, we're pretty big as far as our state 
government, uh, we're pretty big losers in terms of what that does to our economy and to our state government. Yeah, I know. When you're, when you're not in the oil and gas business, you like those prices yep. at the pump to come down. When you're in the oil and gas business, like a lot of people pretty much from Great Bend this way, you like to see that oil price yep. and that price at the pump come up That's because right. that means jobs and, and, and state revenues. That's right. And personally, I, I do a lot of driving, being a, a, having a big district and being five hours from Topeka. We put on, I put on 40, 50,000 miles a year. So, yeah, personally, it's nice. But for the economy and uh, for you know, revenue, it's, a, it's not good. So. It should be nice if you guys could find a happy medium for all that. Yeah, that'd can you be work nice. on that? That'd be nice. Yeah, same thing. You get to the wrap-up more, session. Work more on rain. That. Yeah, that, that'd be good. <laughs> yeah, work on that and the cattle at hog yeah. price and, yeah. the, and the grains. Yeah, yeah work that on would, that too. That'd be good for elections. Right? Okay, well, let's hope that your wrap-up session is fairly quick this time I'm, for you. I'm hoping so. All right, so stick around because when you come back, we're going to talk about some other things that you've got coming up in Topeka. You know, there's school finance, there's Medicaid expansion. There, you know. You and I aren't going to get to it all, but we're going to try. Yep. So stick around. We'll be back with more right after this. You're watching High Plains Today on TV23 with host Chris Jewell. TV23's internet service and 4G live streaming provided by... United Wireless. Coverage you deserve. Service you expect. United Wireless. And welcome back. We're talking to State Senator Garrett Love from the 38th District. We're talking about Topeka and taxes and stuff, I think. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. Okay. So we left off. We were talking about the wrap-up session and some of the things that you're going to have to to work on. And one of the big things is, okay, you get back and... You know, the state constitution of Kansas says we have to have a balanced budget come June 30th, correct? That's right. Okay, so you get That's up That's one of the big differences between us and Topeka. We can't just print money or I borrow a couple more trillion. You know, it's, it's, you have to balance at the end of every year. Yeah, yeah, Washington, they don't do that no. so much. Yep. Okay, so when you guys get back up there and you've got the new revenue estimates coming out and you're going to go, you know you're not going to be at zero by June 30 when you get up there this week, right? Next yeah. week? Well, I think we'll probably be at zero by this June 30th, but it's the next following year that's probably the bigger question as far as 2017, which that's our responsibility is getting through the next fiscal year. This this fiscal year, I'm, my, I, we're fine, but it's next fiscal year that's going to be the issue, which we have to have resolved. You heard it here first. He said we're fine. Yeah, we're fine. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, okay, but... Now, the governor withheld, what, uh, 90-some million dollars? Yeah, something around 91 there. million from the latest payment that was supposed to go to Capers. And in the last couple of years, you guys in Topeka have been dumping a bunch of money to try and get that fund rebuilt to where it needs to be. Now, what does withholding this payment from Capers, I mean, what does that do for the state? Yeah, well, and that's one thing. When I first got to Topeka in 2011, we had the third worst funded pension plan in America. And that was, so we're basically just up there on the bad side with Illinois, with some of these states that are about to go broke, it seems like. Um, it was, I think, 52% funded or something. Uh, had a very large actuarial liability. And that's one thing that's happened pretty steadily over the last four years. We've put more money into capers than anyone ever has before and moved that up um, to upper in the 60% tile range um, and put, puts us closer to the middle of the pack as far as how well our public pension system is funded. And we've put a lot of money, um, like I said, more than anyone ever has before. And so this move the governor made kind of as a, um, to take money out of capers, we put something into law, the legislature did, that he had to repay it with 8% interest, which would be better than the account is earning, you know, but that just, that, that's what has to then happen come, I think, September 31st. So Of at, this year? Of this year, yep. Okay, so he's holding out $91 million, and it's just over here, but you're going to count that as part of the big whole total so that the state can be at zero when they need to be? Is I mean, is that how that's working? I, I'd say it's towards getting through the end of this year is kind of why he did that. Um, but he has to repay that with interest. 
um, this coming year. He's basically he can do that as part of his allotments, um, like the last couple of governors did. The last you know one last governor did it to education. You know K twelve higher ed. We saw that occur, um, and the governor's choosing to do that through Capers, I guess, because we put so much into it, and uh, that's why we then put into law that it has to be repaid with interest. Okay. Uh, and, but the thing is, now he's going to hold that out, but that affects nobody that is currently receiving CAPERS benefits, correct? That is, that is right. It's uh, anyone receiving benefits and, and also any current employees that are putting in, uh, it's, they're still, uh, it's, CAPERS is still much better funded than it was five years ago, six years ago, ten years ago, um, and so they won't have an impact on them. But so, obviously they have a right to be concerned and, and well, yeah. take anybody, issue with Anybody it. starts no dipping question. into your savings no, account, you get, you get excited. No, no question. But on the, on the same hand, those same people should be happy and excited about all the money that's been put in the last few years to shore it up because it was in a very bad place so, uh, five years ago. With this new legislation you guys put in last year that that has to be paid back, so this coming September, the end of September, then that $91 million plus interest will go back into the CAPERS fund. Yeah, and, and it wasn't, the money wasn't taken out of CAPERS. I don't know if we clarified that. It was payments were withheld. So the additional right. payments didn't get put in. But, yeah, then by September 31st, those payments will have to go in to CAPERS with the interest. It's over here. We're holding it because we want to count it on this. And then come, come September, we'll put it in. Well, that. he's us using it to make payments yeah. for other Jobs, education, I mean, for other things the state government does is what, he's, is what it's being used for. Um, not just towards counting it, but towards using it uh, is my understanding. Okay. Kind of like now, is that what's happening with the KDOT money and these other funds that are one-time monies that we're taking those monies and using them in, in, in putting them into the state general fund? Or yeah, no? as far as budgeting year to year, there's some, uh, I would call them, Fee sweeps from from small agencies to big agencies, and, and it is one-time money. It's band-aids. I think we were talking before the show when I was here in 2010. We had a completely different type of group in control, a Democrat governor, and you know we watched and would see you know all this one-time money being used to basically put on a band-aid, uh, and kind of knew well, that's not going to work. And then the next, very next year, when I got elected, we had a 550 million dollar shortfall, and we're and we're kind of seeing that when you use one-time money where you're basically still spending at the same amount, but you're not really changing uh, the revenue because you kind of either have to lower spending uh, or raise revenue to make a systemic uh, uh, funding system that it works. The one-times doesn't really fix anything unless the economy really picks up. And, it, and you know, it hasn't as far as revenue we're coming in since we we're a heavy commodity state and Aviation still not, I mean, it's having troubles, right. and, and so that's, that's kind of where we're at. Okay. Hold that thought. Okay. Because we're going to talk about, you've been doing a lot of Band-Aids since you've been up there. I know that. So when we come back, we're going to talk about how do we stop the bleeding and get away from the Band-Aids. Be back with more with Senator Love after this. And we're back. I'm joined by Garrett Love. He is the state senator from the 38th District here in southwest Kansas. We're talking stuff. That's all I can say. We've covered a lot of stuff. We have. We have. All right. Let's talk. When we, when we were winding up the last segment, we were talking about everything that's going on in Topeka, where this money's coming from, why we're taking this money. How do you see, you know, we've been talking about Band-Aids. We haven't talked about the, the tax cuts that were instituted back in 2012 by the governor. Um, and he's been pretty solid on his stance that, no. We're not changing any of that. Things are going to turn around. He's been saying that for, what, four, five, six years now? And we're still, hmm. And I know the oil and gas revenues and those types of things have hit us hard. But where do you see the state of Kansas going if we don't turn some of this around? Well, and Or do I, we not need to? I, I'd say, and when that went into effect, it was a, a plan that, um, you know, was... was supposed to be a compromise. There was supposed to be uh, more that went into it. It was too much, too fast. Um, I said that then. I was going to, I was in my second year, and I was going to members of leadership uh, and saying this, you know, we've got to come up with a compromise um, because 
this is too much too fast. And ultimately, you know, it, it went in as is, uh, which then we've kind of seen the impacts of, of the revenue issue. But, but you still, uh, you kind of have to decide, I think we talked about this in the last segment, if you're either going to make adjustments to that, which have, we have had adjustments to that. Part of the original bill was to use some sales tax revenue to lower income tax. And, and one thing people do forget is that it wasn't just a small business income tax cut. It was a, it was a personal income tax cut was the large majority of it. The top rate went from 6.3 to 4.8%. And that, in Kansas, that's the main rate. I think that starts at like $20,000. Uh, and that's where the majority of the um, income tax cut went to, was to the individual uh, side of it. And so we have made adjustments with sales tax, uh, which was part of the original plan to help pay for it. Um, and uh, ultimately, you know, we've, it's still, it still has not been enough to keep spending at the pace where it is, which is another thing you're not going to see in most of the media is that we've actually spent more this year than last year. We have got more money in this month, this year, than we did this month, last year. And education as a whole, not very much more, not as much as, as most people in education would like as far as an increase, but it's gotten more as a whole uh, this year than it did last year. Pretty much the same, uh, but has gotten more. And that's kind of that's kind of where we're at. I think another thing we really want to need to look at is find more efficiencies that we can get in government. Uh, we had an efficiency study last year uh, that the um, members of the House had really worked on. It cost $2 million, uh, but they've had a lot of recommendations, and, and we're going to spend more time, I think, looking at those to see ways that we can save, ways that we can become more efficient. Because a lot of times government, it doesn't work to do that itself as much as it should. And I know that I'm, I'm in government. Uh, I, I see that. Uh, and so looking to find ways, having outside people taking a look. Uh, we have also have a post-audit agencies that audits the state, audits us, and, and, and working with them, too, to find, uh, find more efficiencies is a good thing. Uh, and we're going to, again, need to, to make adjustments as far as in what we're spending or in what we're bringing in uh, to make things balanced and to make things uh, uh, not where every month you you have to be worried and stressed as far you as you guys are up there going through the checkbook going crap yeah <laughs> aren't you yeah that's, well somebody is up yeah. there well he's going every, through and go, well and just every and... every month you want your it puts a lot on to those to those you know what you got last month uh, because it's post we're oper you know operating at at such tight numbers and that's that's and every, and every time a go. minus comes up, somebody up there is going. Yeah. yeah. Or you know, last month though it was it was negative two million or something. You know, to two million less, and and that was actually kind of close to even or whatever. <laughs> so I think people and people were expecting a bigger loss. I don't know. You know, sometimes I think it's just rumors. People don't really know. But you know, well, some with the size thought, of budget that the state of Kansas has. Two million is just kind of like walking yeah, around money, isn't it's it? It's fairly close to being. I mean, <laughs> as far as a percent, it's it's pretty close to even. But yeah, I I hate to say that as far as that two million dollars isn't a lot of money. My very first bill I wrote saved the state five and a half million dollars. I said that's a lot of money. You can do a lot with five and a half million dollars, uh, but as a proportion of the state budget, it's not a big yeah. chunk. All right, we got about a minute and a half or so left, but I do want to touch on. You started to bring it up, but let's talk about what's going to happen with education funding because you get back next week you guys are going to be done with your wrap-up session for the Supreme state supreme court gets started on may 10th on oral arguments on you know you guys that you redistributed 83 million dollars and whether that's going to fly or not yeah so we're we're uh, going to be watching that very closely as far as what what the courts do you know i i uh we had a block grant formula that got passed last year, um, which basically got rid of the old formula and said, we're going to make a new formula and kind of hold everyone flat for the next couple of years. And the courts are looking at that as far as saying whether that, that works. Um, I didn't support the block grant formula because I don't want to say I'm going to support a new formula without knowing what that is. And that's kind of, um, you know, because I don't know what that's going to be. I don't think anybody right now can tell you right. what the next school finance formula will be. Yeah, and the old and one maybe was I'd complicated. Support it. But maybe I'd support it, maybe I won't. Uh, and I didn't want to vote for that saying I would without knowing what it would be. Uh, and then, so then, uh, this lawsuit, which actually started in 2010, uh, so under a different 
governor under different legislative leadership. We've had these every decade, it feels like, every, I mean, that have been ongoing. Like this one has been going for six, seven years. Yeah. And uh, it just came back, another piece on equity, saying uh, there wasn't fairness there. We ended up having a bill that every single Republican in the Senate and the House voted for. I think everyone in the House, I know everyone in the Senate voted for that, that kind of changed the way we did some of the equity formula, but then it also held everyone else harmless, which some of the districts didn't, didn't like that. They, or the attorneys maybe for those districts felt like them getting this much money and being held harmless actually hurt the equity for these districts that needed it the yeah. most. Uh, but a lot of legislators didn't want to hurt their districts. I had, I had a lot of small districts that would have taken a, taken a cut, and that's not something that I really wanted to see either. So the hold harmless revision, um, I thought, you know, helped them, those districts. So the biggest thing is, though, you've got to wait and see what the Supreme Court does. We do. And you might have to pack your bag and go back. We might have to. All right. Okay, after you get done with the sessions, we're out of time. 30 minutes, done. After you get done with your session, come back and see me and explain to me everything that you got done in All your right. wrap-up session. All I right. always look forward to talking to you. All right, well, thank you again for having me on. All right, thanks, Garrett. Yep. Thanks, Chris. And thanks for joining us today for this special edition of High Plains Today. I thank my guest, Garrett Love, in State Senator District 38. See you next time on High Plains Today. up to date with the latest information from TV23 on our Facebook page, KDGL-TV.